His Excellency President Ramaphosa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Program Director, Minister Tulas Nyesi, Minister of Employment and Labor in South Africa. Director General of the International Labor Organization, Mr. Guy Ryder. Your Excellency, Saulus Klaus Chilima, Vice President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency and dear friend, Stefan Lofen, former Prime Minister of Sweden. And as you had, a former co-chair of commission that was set up by the ILO to look at the future of work. Your Excellency Mr. Sitia Zigalala, Premier of the province of KwaZulu-Natal and Your Worship Mayor Kaunda, Mayor of the beautiful city of Eteguini ministers and deputy ministers amongst us and MECs and Nobel laureates Mr. Kailish and Sachati and my sister Ms. Lema Gowe and Ms. Zingiswa Losi, the president of the Congress of South African Trade Unions and regional vice president of the International Trade Union Federation, Confederation and General Secretary of COSATU, Beijing Jalin Jali. My sister Jacqueline Mugo from Kenya representing employers and our collective daughter Tado representing the children of the world and especially the Nelson Mandela Children's Parliament, international guests who are here with us, and ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests and leaders of civil society. South Africa is indeed honored to host this very important fifth global conference on the elimination of child labor in partnership with the International Labor Organization. On behalf of the government and the people of South Africa, I welcome you all to our country and indeed to the city of Eteguini. We welcome you much as Eteguini and the other surrounding areas in this basin where you are holding this conference has suffered a devastating flood that has led to the loss of almost 500 people. We'd like to thank you all who have expressed your condolences and kind wishes of support. And Vice President Chilima, do pass on our gratitude to President Chakwera as the chairperson of <clears throat> our African region here in Sadak, he did pass on his condolences and messages of support. So thank you to all of you who have sent your prayers, your kind wishes and your support. Thank you very much. I wish to commend the ILO for organizing this very important conference. In the quarter of a century since the first international conference on child labor was held in Oslo in 1997, 
the ILO has been at the forefront, the real forefront of the global effort to eradicate the practice of child labor. Not only has the ILO forged international consensus through instruments such as the Convention on the Worst Forms of Child Labor, but it has been active together with its partners to ensure that such instruments have a meaningful impact on the, on the lives of the world's children. We are particularly pleased to be hosting this conference in the year that South Africa marks 25 years since our democratic constitution came into effect. That was the adoption of this constitution was a seminal moment in the long and bitter struggle for the rights of all the people of South Africa. The recognition and advancement of human rights was central to the struggle for the democracy in South Africa. From the earliest Bill of Rights, because what we are talking about here at this conference has a particular history globally, but it has a much more pointed history here in South Africa. From the earliest Bill of Rights, which was adopted by the governing party, the African National Congress, in 1923, through to our new democratic constitution, adopted as the supreme law of the land, the rights of children have been expressly advanced as a fundamental element of broader human rights. The African Claims document, which was adopted in 1943 by a whole range of organizations, including the governing party here, asserted the right of every child to free and compulsory education. The Freedom Charter, which was also adopted in this country at the height of the struggle for democracy in 1955 by the Congress of the People demanded that child labor should be abolished. That is as far back as the struggle to eliminate child labor started and intensified in this country. It further said that education shall be free compulsory, universal, and equal for all children, and that mothers and young children should receive special medical care. This was not just a matter of principle. The assertion of the rights of children was a direct response to the deprivation, to the discrimination, and to the deliberate neglect that had been visited on the children of this country, particularly black children, by successive colonial as well as apartheid administrations. The enshrinement of the rights of children in our country's Bill of Rights is about correcting this grave historical injustice. Our democratic constitution places obligations on all, including the state, to advance the rights of children to a name and a nationality. It places an obligation on us to advance their rights to care, basic nutrition, shelter, health care and social services. The Constitution of South Africa enshrines the rights of children to be protected from ill treatment, from neglect, from abuse or degradation. 
South Africa is also a signatory to the Convention on the Rights of the Child which established global standards for the protection, survival and development of children. In reflecting on the paramount importance we have attached to the rights of all children of our country, we recall Nelson Mandela's words when he said, our children are the rock on which our future will be built, our greatest asset as a nation. They will be the leaders of our country, the creators of our national wealth, who care for and protect our people. Close quotes. In giving effect to this conviction, President Mandela personally dedicated himself to the care and protection of children by establishing the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund as well as the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital in Johannesburg. He was adamant that in order for our young people to grow up and fulfill their role in society, they are in need and deserving of our protection. The South African Constitution advances the right of every child to be protected from exploitative labor practices. This includes not being permitted to perform work or services that are age inappropriate or that place the child's well-being education, physical, or mental health at risk. Such exploitative labor practices are also disallowed as they impact on a child's spiritual, moral, and social development. Such labor practices rob children of a childhood. They deny them the opportunity to be explorers, to be learners, to develop and fulfill their potential. They deny them the opportunity to play, to just be children. Child labor perpetuates the cycle of poverty, denying young people the education they need to improve their circumstances. It condemns communities to forms of economic activity and labor that limit any prospect of advancement or progress. For many, the words child labor conjure up images of young people working in sweatshops and informal factories. We have all seen the terrible, heart-rending images of children some as young as six laboring in mines in a number of locales around the world. These images are the open face of child exploitation. But there is also a hidden face that many do not get to see. It is the children in domestic servitude that a number of speakers spoke about here earlier to families and relatives. And these children are prevented from going to school because they have to do work either in the household, looking after an aged parent or grandparent, or to work on the farm and do all manner of other jobs. It is the children of labor tenants on farms fulfilling exploitative agreements with farm owners where the entire family must work on the land in exchange for the right to live on the farm. It is the many, many children, boys and girls, who are bought and sold in international sex trade, the worst of all forms of exploitation. 
We are here today because we share a common conviction that child labor in all its facets is an enemy. Child labor is an enemy of our children's development. It is an enemy of our children's future and it is an enemy of progress. It is also an enemy of nationhood. No civilization and no country and no economy can consider itself to be at the forefront of progress if its success and riches have been built on the backs of children. We are collectively here because we recognize the urgent need to put an end to a situation where millions of children across the world are losing their formative years to the burden of unfair treatment. About this, we are categorical. There should be no excuse. There should never even be an explanation or justification for using child labor. According to the ILO and UNICEF, we have made substantial progress in addressing the worst forms of child labor exploitation. At the same time, the effect of worsening poverty means that, according to the ILO, a further 8.9 million children are expected to be engaged in child labor by the end of 2022. And we've also heard that child labor numbers are ticking up, particularly in the youngest category of children. This threatens our efforts to eliminate child labor by 2025 as part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This means that we need to intensify our efforts and tackle the challenges that we still face with renewed vigor, with renewed purpose. One of the most significant challenges is that the dire material conditions facing millions of families around the world often places families in an impossible predicament. When life is about survival and families struggle to make ends meet, young children are often forced to leave school, to go and earn wages to assist their families. They sacrifice their own future. They sacrifice their own progress and education to advance the interests of their families and more often adults. Another challenge is limited access to affordable quality education for children. Without such opportunities and particularly where there is no legal obligation on parents to send their children to school, there is a greater risk of children of poor families being put to work and then they lose the opportunity of going to school. Lack of universal social protection, including child support grants and forms of child care support for working mothers, contribute greatly to conditions that increase the likelihood of child labor. It is our duty and responsibility as the international community to ensure that no parent is ever put in such a predicament, that no child is denied decent schooling and that no family is forced to send their children out to work because they have no choice. Eliminating child labor is an integral part of our journey as the international community towards 
achieving social justice, to achieving human rights and protection for the most vulnerable in the world. This conference will be looking at why millions of children are victims of exploitative labor, why this persists in some countries but less in others, and on what decisive interventions are needed to end these practices. The COVID-19 pandemic has deepened poverty, it has increased inequality, and it has also expanded underdevelopment across the world. The fragmentation of global supply chains and how this has affected child labor in countries with extractive-based economies is a matter that should be taken up by the ILO, by business, by human rights activists, as well as by civil society. Labor organizations must also take this up. In time to come, the economic impact of the pandemic will also influence patterns of migration. We know that child labor coexists with migration flows and socioeconomic instability in developing economies. In a climate where millions are prepared to brave the harshness of deserts, rough seas, in search of a better life, the risk of children being exposed to exploitative labor practices is high. The reality is that our prospects of eliminating child labor and achieving decent work for limited and are limited unless we change the structure of the global economy and the institutions that support it. Among other things, this requires that patterns of trade as well as investment that are more inclusive, creating opportunities for developing economies to become more integrated into the global value chains are absolutely necessary. They need to have the resources and the opportunities to industrialize, to advance up the production value chain, and to provide their people with better jobs. We call on all social partners to adopt if we are to address this challenge and eliminate child labor, that social partners should adopt the Durban call to action that focuses on the practical steps, practical steps that need to be taken to make a difference. The goal should be to complement the ILO reporting mechanisms without adding more responsibilities to member countries. As a global community, we must demonstrate our commitment to ending child labor by committing ourselves to far-reaching actions. And I'd like to suggest the following. Firstly, we must ensure the full implementation by all countries of the ILO West Forms of Child Labor Convention of 1999. Guy Ryder says, Many countries have signed up to this and we're grateful for that. The convention is a bold statement of intent, but its worth will only be realized if it is consistently and comprehensively implemented. Secondly, we must attain universal access to social protection with a specific focus on children and the vulnerable by providing a basic floor of support for families with children we can reduce the need for children to be put to work whether in the home or elsewhere one of the things that President Nelson Mandela did was to focus on children, particularly when it came 
to social protection of children. When he introduced the social grant for children, which covered almost 12 million children in our country. And when he also introduced a meal a day at school for young children who were in schools. Thirdly, we must work towards free, equitable and quality education for all children so that every child has an opportunity to advance and to improve their material circumstances. Our experience in South Africa has been that child support grants, fee-free basic education and school feeding schemes have been a lifeline for indigent families. Such, as, such initiatives help to keep children in school and thus makes them less vulnerable to exploitation. Fourthly, we must intensify our efforts to end all forms of discrimination against the girl child, particularly with respect to domestic work and access to education. By ending this form of discrimination, we free up the girl child who the girl children have historically and forever been the ones who are subjected to do domestic work and in many cases have had to forego going to school because they've had these other tasks. Fifthly, we must work to expand global supply chains to include poorer countries. As part of our efforts, to achieve decent work and eradicate child labor. And lastly, we need to ensure that companies and consumers are more aware of child labor and its effects, and that through their purchasing and investment decisions, they do not support exploitative labor practices. Now, without a conscious effort to achieve social justice, we will struggle as humanity to eliminate child labor. Vulnerable young people across the world are looking to all of us, as Tato who stood here and spoke to us. They are looking at this conference to emerge with actions that will radically change their lives. Let us, as we are gathered here, do everything within our power to meet the exploitation that Tato expressed here, the expectation rather, that she expressed here. Through the Durban call to action on the elimination of child labor, we are optimistic that as social partners and as stakeholders, we will be able to chart a course towards eliminating child labor by 2025. We wish the governments, employer organizations, labor organizations, and all stakeholders success in the vital work they have to undertake to ensure that the rights of children are respected, that the rights of children are also protected, upheld, expanded, and extended. The world depends on you gathered here to continue to be the torch bearers for the decent work, to be the champions of a better life for the peoples of the world, but more particularly for the children of the world so that they can get the justice that they deserve because as Nelson Mandela said they are the future I thank you